The Leominster City Council meeting is funded in part by DeCarolis Insurance Agency at www.decarolisinsuranceagency.com. A public hearing before the Lemonster City Council, Petition 05-22, City Council Vice President David R. Cormier requests to amend Chapter 13, Section 13-34 and add the following. Grant, Grant Street northerly side from 176 to 222 Grant Street and Grant Street southerly side from 179 to 221 Grant Street. Uh, the RE line reading no parking on both sides of the street. We did get a uh, referral back from the um, traffic agent, Lieutenant Mark Amico um, of the Lomster Police Department. The traffic team has reviewed this referral and viewed the area in question. The area is in front of the dam that is on Grant Street. The Police Department Traffic Bureau is not opposed to banning parking on both sides of the roadway in this area. It appears that if vehicles are parked on both sides of the street, commuting traffic traveling in both directions could face some difficulties. Parked motor vehicles could contribute to narrowing of the roadway and visibility issues. Our aim is to keep the monitoring public safe and it appears that this referral request is in keeping with that. Thank you, Lieutenant Mark Amico. That's dated July 14th, 2021. Um, uh, first, the petitioner is actually on legal affairs. Uh, so, uh, Councilor Cormier, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, well, just a quick explanation. Um, you know, there's been some problems in recent years at the dam. Um, as most people know or should know, it's, um, you know, it's private property. It's part of an association. It's not a, a public swimming area or fishing area or anything uh, of that nature. And there's been a lot of... Uh, usage by outsiders there. So a lot of people have been parking on Grant Street. Some people are dropping their kids off, so obviously that doesn't create a parking issue, but um, it's being dealt with, um, you know, by the police as far as the trespassing is concerned. But um, the people that are responsible over there have asked me to petition this so that um, they can uh, make sure that there's not a lot of opportunity for people to park and be able to just walk right up into there and make themselves at home. Um, and um, I mean, and it is, when people do park there, it is kind of dangerous. It's, a, it's very narrow, it's windy. Um, so that's, that's basically the, the reason for this petition. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Shalapo Zephyr, um, any questions or comments? Uh, no, I think the um, Lieutenant Amico's referral is quite clear. It makes sense to me. Okay. Do any other counselors have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll go to the public. Is there any member of the public that wishes to address the city council either in favor of or against this petition? Second time, does any member of the public wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 05-22? 
Third and final time, does any member of the public wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 05-22? Um, any councilors, uh, any requests for final comments? Seeing none, Mr. President, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We have just a minute, I guess, before the next hearing. This is a public hearing before the Lemister City Council on petition 03-22. City Council Vice President David Cormier request to amend section 2-15 for election of president by deleting the current language and inserting a new provision specifically regulating the succession of the office of president should a vacancy in the office occur. We, um, we did get a letter from uh, city, city solicitor, Brian Riley. Um, I'll read this. Uh, Diane, I am responding to the referrals below. I understand that the petitions below would provide a mechanism for the city council to select a new president and vice president in the event that a vacancy occurs. Either in either council office during the year, for example, a councilor leaving office mid-year or resigning as president or vice president. The city charter provides the following provision on the subject. Section 3.2, Organization of the City Council. The City Council shall annually on the first Monday in January or on the day following when said first Monday is also New Year's Day, meet for the purposes of organization. The City Clerk or in his absence, the member present senior in years of service and in age shall preside at such meeting. The City Council shall elect from among its members by separate roll call votes a president and a vice president. A majority of the full council shall be necessary for such election. In addition, section 2-15 of the revised ordinances details the procedure for that meeting on the first Monday in January. However, it makes no provision for filling a vacancy. In my opinion, if the ordinances proposed by the petitions are approved, the ordinances would be valid and would not conflict with the city charter. The election of a president and vice president is an important task for the council as the president presides over the meeting and voting process and sets that the agenda for meetings as well as other responsibilities under the council's rules of procedure. In addition, section 2-8B and C of the city charter provide for the pres president and potentially the vice president to serve as acting mayor in the event that the mayor cannot perform his duties. As such, it would be reasonable to provide a formal procedure to fill any vacancy that, may, that might arise in these two offices during the calendar year, rather than needing to wait until January. In my further opinion, ordinances pursuant to these two petitions would not conflict with the city charter. Section 3-2 of the charter provides for the annual election of the two officers to serve for one year, but it is my opinion that the language of this section does not preclude an ordinance to provide for filling a mid-year vacancy should one arise. In the event that, pursuant to a new ordinance, a president or vice president is elected during the year to fill a vacancy, section 3-2 would nonetheless require a new election on the first Monday in January to fill the offices for the subsequent year. If there are further questions regarding these two petitions, please let me know. 
very truly yours, Brian Riley. <coughs> and I, I should, Mr. President, note that this letter is also a recommendation for the next petition, 4-22. Very well, thank you. Um, this, uh, this particular petition was submitted by um, uh, Councilor Cormier, who's also on the Legal Affairs Committee. Um, so in deference uh, to that, I will go to you first, Mr. Cormier. Thank you very much. I just think, um, you know, this is just a little bit of housekeeping. You know, obviously we had to go through this and, um, you know, I think we took a procedure that we are accustomed to. Um, and um, I, I think, you know, it kind of goes without saying after reading the opinion from Mr. Riley, but I think now we should just put it into words and make it clear, so. I think it's uh -huh. just a little housekeeping of our ordinances, really. Okay. You know, the procedure is pretty standard on how we do it in January, so. Thank you. Councilor Shalafo Zephyr, anything to add? No. Okay. Any other member of the City Council have any comments or questions regarding uh, Petition 3-22? Councilor Ardinger? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, should there be a provision, uh, just thinking, that this election has to be held within a certain time period? you know, after the office is open. Uh, my thought is that, you know, if for some reason uh, it would be held up, uh, it could leave the same situation without having someone in office for an extended period of time. Um, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think, that, I think that's, that's probably a pretty good point. Um, well, in what I originally, if I may, what I originally I submitted, it, it explains yeah. it in there. Yeah, how, how it would all be done, so. <laughs> okay. I should have read a little. <laughs> I have a copy of it here. Yeah. Do you have them both? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, if you look at the uh, petitions as submitted, um, I believe it's all spelled out. Yeah. Uh, My error. See. I think it states the next regular meeting or next scheduled meeting if it's right. not the regular meeting. Probably a pretty, why don't, why don't I read this into the election? So this is 3-22, election of president. On the first Monday in January of each year or on the following business day of said Monday is New Year's Day, the council shall meet for the purpose of electing a president at an organizational meeting at a time to be announced by the city clerk on a public agenda. The meeting shall be called to order by the city clerk or in case of a vacancy in that office or his or her absence by the senior member of the council present who shall preside until a president is elected by nomination from a member of the council. If a vacancy, i.e. death, resignation, or removal from office of the president shall occur at any other time during the year, the vice president shall forthwith at the next regular meeting or the next scheduled meeting that would meet the requirements of posting a public meeting under any applicable law of the city council after the vacancy occurs, preside over the meeting until a president is elected and accept nominations to fill the vacancy. If the vice president is absent of such meeting, the city clerk would preside over the meeting to accept nominations for president until a president is elected. If in addition the vice president, the city clerk were absent from such meeting, the senior member of the council would then preside to accept nomination for president until a president is elected. So I, that's my error. I should have I should have read the formal petition in its entirety. Um, having read that, Councilor Zephyr, did you have any questions or comments? I don't. Does any other member of the council have any questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, I'll go to the audience. Uh, does anyone in the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 3-22? Second time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 3-22? Third and final time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 3-22? Seeing none, do any Councilors, have any final questions or comments? 
Seeing none, Mr. President, I'd ask you to close the public hearing. Very well, we'll declare that public hearing closed. And we'll move on to the public hearing relative to 4-22. Okay, I just need to wait one minute. Actually, that one's scheduled for 6.45, so you're good to go. Oh, am I? Okay. Yeah. Oh, here we go. My papers are all... I just have one moment. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, petition 4-22, City Council Vice President David R. Cormier, request to amend section 2-15-1 for election of Vice President by inserting a new provision specifically re regulating the succession of the office of the Vice President should a vacancy in the office occur. I will read the formal petition this time. This is amend Article 3 City Council and add a new section Section 2-15.1, Election of Vice President. On the first Monday in January of each year, on the following business day of said, or on the following business day of said Monday is New Year's Day. The council shall meet for the purpose of electing a vice president at an organizational meeting at a time to be announced by the city clerk on a public agenda. The president shall accept nominations from members of the council and have a vote until a vice president is elected. If a vacancy, for example, death, resignation, or removal from office of the vice president shall occur at any other time during the year, the president shall forthwith at the next regular meeting or the next scheduled meeting that would meet the open meeting law requirements of the city council after the vacancy occurs, accept nominations by members of the city council to fill the vacancy until a vice president is elected. If the president is absent of such meeting, the city clerk would preside over the meeting to accept nominations for vice president until a vice president is elected. If in addition to the president, the city clerk were absent from such meeting, the senior member of the council would then preside to accept nomination for vice president until a vice president is elected. I previously read the uh, opinion from attorney Brian Riley, um, who essentially indicated that these petitions are consistent uh, with the charter. Um, go first to Councilor Cormier as the author of the petition. Anything to add? Likewise to the other petition, just, oh. just some housekeeping and it's consistent with the way we've always operated and okay. elected our leadership. And Councilor Shalfo Zephyr, anything to add? No. Okay. Uh, any other councilors <coughs> have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll go to the public. Is there any member of the public who wishes to address the council either in favor of or against this petition? Second time, is any member of the public wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 4-22? Third and final time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 4-22? Uh, seeing none, um, last call for counselors. Any, any counselor have a question or comment? Seeing none, Mr. President, I'd ask you to close the public hearing. We'll declare the public hearing uh, closed and we'll move on to the public hearing scheduled for 650 on 2-22. This is a public hearing before the city council of the city of Lemonster, petition 2-22. Mark C. Bedanza, City Council President, request to amend Section 2-16 of Article 3 of the Revised Ordinances for the City of Lemonster. The Ray Line reading, replacing, no meeting shall be held during the week of Christmas with no meeting shall be held on the fourth Monday of December. Um, I think before, before I go to my mem members of legal affairs, I just go to the uh, council president just for a quick over review. Yeah, it came to my uh, attention and understanding that the way the current ordinance is written, two out of seven years based on when Christmas falls, what day of the week Christmas falls on, 
we have a fourth uh, meeting in December, but the majority of the time, five out of seven years, uh, there is no fourth meeting, or there is no meeting, uh, no fourth Monday meeting uh, in December. So it seems to me, there are, as far as I can tell, there are 31 days every December. So there's no substantive reason to have a fourth um, Monday meeting in December, especially where five-sevenths of the time we don't anyway. So I thought this was just, again, uh, as Councilor Cormier indicated, housekeeping, um, make it consistent. If there is a abiding need or, or something that crops up, of course, we can call a special meeting uh, to take care of that particular item. But this way here, we know that every year we have one, one December meeting, the, the first one, and that's it. Okay. Uh, I'll now go to members of Legal Affairs. Councilor Shalafo Zephyr, any questions or comments? No. Nope. Councilor Cormier? All set, thank you. Do <clears throat> any other members of the City Council have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll go to the public. Does any member of the audience wish to address the Council either in favor of or against Petition 2-22? Second time, does any member of the audience wish to address the Council either in favor of or against Petition 2-22? Third and final time, does any member of the audience wish to address the Council either in favor of or against Petition 2-22? Uh, seeing none, final call for Councilors. Any questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, Mr. President, I'd ask you to close the public hearing. Very well. The public hearing on 2-22 is closed. As soon as the clerk gets the sign-up list, we'll conduct the public forum, and it looks like for the first time in a long time, we won't have a recess <laughs> before the meeting or after the meeting starts. Okay, the public forum is an opportunity for any member of the audience to speak on a matter specifically listed on the council agenda. Speakers will be asked to come to the microphone and state their formal name and address along with identifying the specific item or items they wish to address. Each speaker is respectfully asked to keep their comments within a two minute time frame. The council will not be responding or answering any questions. However, at the discretion of the council president, clarification may be given. Is there any member of the public that wishes to address the city council on an agenda item this evening? Yes, uh, Michael Stassen, 893 Main Street. I just want to briefly address communication C-03. This is uh, a request for an appropriation made to the school department expense account. Um, this is the, it, it's noted as E-rate revenue, so I just want to remind um, the council and anyone in the public, E-rate is a federal program that pays for 80% of the cost of internet service for the schools. We have a choice of either taking that up front as a discount or, as we've elected to do in Lemonster, um, pay the full bill and get reimbursed the 80%. So what this uh, appropriation represents is the 80% that will eventually be reimbursed. So it's being put in so we can spend it and then get it back. Uh, we are the only community that does it this way. Everybody else takes the discount. Um, but so just. Just to clarify, that's what it's about. And of course, I'm in favor of that. We need to pay for the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stassen. Is there any other member of the public that wishes to address the City Council in the public forum on an agenda item? Second time, any member of the public that wishes to address the City Council on an agenda item this evening? In a third and final time, is there any member of the public that wishes to address the City Council on an item that's on our agenda this evening? Seeing none, I will declare the public forum closed and we will formally open the meeting in just a couple of minutes. <coughs>
Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And they'll take the roll of councils in attendance, starting with Councilor Frieda. Present. Councilor Dombrowski. Present. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. Present. Councilor Angelini. Present. Councilor Hardinger. Present. Councilor Pauline Cormier. Present. Councilor David Cormier. Present. And I shall be recorded as present. We have eight councilors present this evening. Now move on to the approval of records. Is Mr. Did Mr. President, before we do that, uh, could I request a moment of silence? We had a... Um, a priest that died suddenly last week that was uh, very active in the Lovester community for many, many years, Father Dennis O'Brien. He was very active in Our Lady of the Lake, St. Leo's at one point, St. Bernard's High School. Um, he died unexpectedly, um, and I'd just like to offer a moment of silence. Sure, Counselor, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you, Councilors. We'll now move on to the Chairman of Records. Do you have a report, Mr. Chairman? <clears throat> yes, Mr. President, I reviewed the minutes for June 28th, 2021 and July 12th, 2021 and find them to be in order and unless there's any objection, ask that they be placed on file. Very well, that may be done. Next, we have communications from the Mayor. Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests that the appointment of Eileen Romsden of 110 Cove Road, Lunenburg, Mass., to the Office of Emergency Management. The appointment of Eileen Ramsden will be referred to the Chairwoman of Ways and Means. Mr. President, regular course, and we will have um, Ms. Ramsden come in on 8-9-6-15-22. Very well. That may be done. Uh, the Ramsden appointment has been given regular course with an interview set up for August 9th at 6.50 p.m. Moving on to C3. CO3, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests that an appropriation of $298,455.60 be made to the school department expense account, the same amount to be raised by fiscal year 2022 revenue regarding estimate fiscal year 2022 E-rate revenue. C3 is referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the calendar, regular course. <clears throat> C3 has been given regular course. Moving on to C4. C4. Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests that the list of election officers for August 31st, 2021 to August 31st, 2022 be appointed. C4 is referred to the Chairwoman of Ways and Means. Uh, regular request, Mr. President, and we will not have them come in for Okay, thank you very much for that. <laughs> C4 has been given regular course. Moving on to, well, we have no petitions first time on the agenda, so we now have matters before the City Council, starting with the financial report. Thank you, Mr. President. We began the fiscal year on, um, well, this report says July 1, 2020, but it should be July 1, 2021. Um, little typo there. Um, and we began uh, with $19,904,602.80. Um, it is likely that we're only gonna spend um, tonight $2,300. Um, which should leave us a balance of roughly $19,902,000 or so. Um, there is an appropriation, a rather large appropriation on here that was factored in, um, which would have left us a balance of about $18,785,000, but that has been asked to be given leave to withdraw. Um, so I anticipate that that will happen, and that is the financial report. Very well, any questions on the financial report? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to finance. And C1, is the chairman ready to report? Yes, Mr. President, C-01, Dean J. Mazzarella Mayor requests that an appropriation of $2,300 be made to the Conservation Department expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the Stabilization Fund. Um, this was um, to pay for some unpaid, a few unpaid bills uh, from last year that um, are still pending. Uh, mostly for advertisement. Um, that was one of the biggest um, 
uh, items and a little overage on telephone and office supplies. Um, so I spoke to Jen Reddington today and she assured me that if we go ahead and um, approve this, that she can encumber the money and get those uh, remaining items from the last fiscal year uh, paid. So it would be my recommendation to grant C-01, and I'll ask that you check with members of my committee. Very well, Councilor Pauline Cormier. I agree. And Councilor Angelini. I'm in favor as well, Mr. President. Thank you very much. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Finance uh, Committee to grant C-1. Is there any further discussion? Councilor, Councilor um, Freedom. Through the chair to the Finance Chair. Uh, don't most of the uh, applicants pay for the advertising? Um, well, yeah, they do, but then it, it, it goes into the city coffers, but it comes out of their budget. So. Well, if they, does that go into the general fund when they? Yeah. And that's got to come out? Mm hmm Any other questions? Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting C-1, please recognize in the usual manner. And by a vote of eight to zero, C-1 is granted. Does the chairman have an order? Yes, Mr. President, order that the sum of $2,300 be made to the Conservation Department expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. This is once again regarding funding to pay previous year's bills. Move for the adoption of the order. You've heard the request for the adoption of the order. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting the order, please say yay. 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 Anyone opposed? By a vote of eight to zero, the order has been adopted. Moving on to C-2. C-02, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests an appropriation of $1,116,678 be made to the street resurfacing expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. Uh, this was regarding Chapter 90 paving funds. Um, I guess it was originally anticipated that we um, would not have this settled for a while, but it did get settled quicker than they were expecting. So we did get a, a letter from the mayor dated July 22nd, 2021. Dear members of the city council, I am requesting that the petition C-02 be given leave to withdraw without prejudice. The legislature has finally acted on approval of chapter 90 funding and we will be able to proceed with the paving bid so obviously we're gonna be getting that um, sooner than later and that'll be another communication that will come to us. Um, and the mayor at this point does not see it fit that we gotta, um, that we gotta go this route with C-02. So it would be right, my recommendation that we give C-02 leave to withdraw without prejudice. Very well, I'll check with members of your committee. Councilor Pauline Cormier. I agree. Councilor Angelini. Make it unanimous, Mr. President. Very well, you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Finance Committee to give C-2 leave to withdraw without prejudice. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of giving C-2 leave to withdraw without prejudice, please recognize in a usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of eight to zero, C-2 has been given leave to withdraw without prejudice. Moving on to 1-22, is the chairman ready to report? Yes, Mr. President, 1-22, Gregory C. Chapelain, purchasing agent, requests to enter a five-year contract for actuar actuarial valuation studies for Lemister Retirement System and other post-employment benefits, OPEB uh, retirement obligations. Uh, we do have a letter here um, co-signed by Greg Chapdelaine and, and Jen Reddington, the city, new city comptroller, dated July 1, 2021. I'm not gonna read the whole thing into the record, uh, but I will summarize that um, what they wanna do is obviously allow this in uh, a five-year uh, bid which needs authorization from us um, and uh, historically this has always been done um, annually by the city comptroller. He always did these services annually but now that there's been um, sort of a changing of the guard, they wanna do this every five years. They feel they can potentially get a better deal and have some um, continuity with um, with the vendor and get a better deal from the vendor. So it would be my recommendation that we grant 1-22 uh, and I'll ask you to check with members of my committee. Thank you, Councilor Pauline Cormier. I agree. And Councilor Angelini. Uh, this is consistent, I think, with every request that have come from Mr. Chapman, I think one was IT, the other was uh, forest uh, management, so I think agreement is Very well, you've heard the MS recommendation from finance to grant 1-22. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 1-22, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, by vote of eight to zero, 1-22 is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to legal affairs in 75-21, is the chairman ready to report? I am, Mr. President, petition 75-21, Elizabeth Wood, on behalf of the planning board, request to amend the zoning ordinance pertaining to the regulation of dumpster location and screening. Uh, we're essentially waiting for the planning board to have their public hearing uh, because we need a referral from them. Uh, we do have a public hearing scheduled for August 23rd, 2021 at 6.45 p.m. Uh, my recommendation would be further time. I'd ask you to pull my committee. Very well, Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. I agree. And Councilor David Corner. I also agree. You've heard him as recommendation of the Legal Affairs Committee to grant 75-21 further time. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Frieda. Uh, to the Chair of Legal Affairs, um, is there any reason that you know of that the Building Commissioner and the Building Inspector have two different opinions on this? Um, I, I don't have a complete answer for you, um, but I, I think it'd be best to take that up during the public hearing. You know, I don't, I don't think we should take it up, up outside of the public hearing. Um, but I don't, I don't, the as short answer is an, As long as we get an answer before we have to vote on it. Yeah, no, I will. All right, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 75-21 further time, please recognize in the usual manner. Anyone opposed by vote of eight to zero, 75-21 has been given further time. Moving on to 2-22, is the chairman ready to report? I am, Mr. President. Petition 2-22, Mark C. Bedanza, City Council President, request to amend section 2-16 of Article 3 of the revised ordinances for the City of Lemonster. The ray line reading, replacing no meeting shall be held during the week of Christmas with no meeting shall be held on the fourth Monday of December. Uh, we did have a public hearing earlier this evening. My recommendation is to grant uh, petition 2-22. I'd ask you to poll my committee. Very well, Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. I agree. And Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of legal affairs to grant 2-22. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 2-22, please recognize in the usual manner. Anyone opposed by a vote of eight to zero, 2-22 has been granted. Moving on to 3-22. Thank you, Mr. President. Petition 3-22, City Council Vice President David R. Cormier, request to amend section 2-15 for election of president by deleting the current language and inserting a new provision specifically regulating the succession of the office of president should a vacancy in the office occur. We also had a public hearing earlier this evening. My recommendation, Mr. President, is to grant petition 3-22. I would ask you to also poll my committee. Very well, Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. I agree. And Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. You've heard a unanimous recommendation of the Legal Affairs Committee to grant 3-22. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 3-22, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed by vote of eight to zero, 3-22 has been granted. Moving on to 4-22. Thank you, Mr. President. Petition 4-22. City Council Vice President David R. Cormier request to amend section 2-15-1 for election of Vice President by inserting a new provision specifically regulating the succession of the office of the Vice President should a vacancy in the office occur we also had a public hearing earlier this evening. My recommendation, Mr. President, is to grant petition 4-22. I would ask you to pull my committee. Thank you. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? I, I'm in agreement. And Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. You've heard again this recommendation of the Legal Affairs Committee to grant 4-22. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 4-22, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of eight to zero, 4-22 has been granted. Moving on to 5-22. Thank you, Mr. President. Petition 5-22, City Council Vice President David R. Cormier, request to amend Chapter 13, Article 3, Division 2, Sections 13-34, no parking on certain streets, and add the following. Grant Street, northerly side from 176 to 222 Grant Street, 
and Grant Street Southerly side from 179 to 221 Grant Street. Re the ray line reading no parking on both sides of street. Uh, we had a public hearing earlier this evening. Uh, there was a recommendation from the Lemister Police Department traffic agent um, in favor of this petition. My recommendation is also to grant. I'd ask you to pull my committee. Thank you, Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. I agree. And Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. You've heard the unanimous <clears throat> recommendation of legal affairs to grant 5-22. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of granting 5-22, please recognize in the usual manner. Anyone opposed? 5-22 has been granted by a vote of eight to zero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Moving on to new business. We have nothing listed on the new business. Old business, second reading of an ordinance. Mr. Chairman, you're ready to proceed. I am, Mr. President. Uh, this is the second reading of an ordinance on petition 74-21. Peter Angelini, Ward 5 Counselor, request to install a stop sign on Leland Avenue against northbound drivers at Hoover Street. Uh, my recommendation is to adopt the second reading of the ordinance, and I'd ask you to pull my committee. Very well. Uh, Council Shalfo Zephyr? I agree. And Councilor David Cormier? I also agree. You've heard the unanimous recommendation to grant the second reading of the ordinance. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this will be by roll call, starting with Councilor Frieda. Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay. The second reading of the ordinance is granted by a vote of eight to zero. Is there any other old business to come before the council? Seeing none, we'll move on to the community calendar. Anything under the community calendar? Councilor Frieda. Um, I just want to update um, the council on the police station. Very well. Uh, we've gotten it to a point where it's uh, passed, gone through planning. Uh, we have that okayed. Conservation Commission uh, with their minimal conditions. Um, it is out to bid. Very well. And from what I understand, there are a number of bids, uh, bid requests, document requests, uh, which is a good sign, good thing. Hopefully it'll get us to the number we're looking for. Um, and bids are expected to be in by September 2nd. So hopefully we'll be well on our way and putting a shovel in the ground. Thank looking you, forward Council. to that day. Thank you for the update. Um, and I'm working on getting a presentation together so we can have something that down be, here. That would be great. Thank and you very much. I just have one other thing. Yes. Uh, yesterday I went to an Eagle Scout ceremony for Ryan Doyle. And uh, Ryan has done an incredible job on his Eagle project. Um, he did a cemetery identification photo project of uh, Evergreen, which entailed taking and adding photos of landmarks, street signs, veterans' graves, over 44 section maps of uh, Evergreen, hundreds of photos, then he added them all to each section map. So now when the uh, veterans and the scouts go out to gra flag the graves on both holidays, they'll have um, something to go by with grave photos and street signs and uh, applications. So he works in conjunction with the veterans um, center and has got that accomplished. Excellent. It was quite, a, quite an accomplishment. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I appreciate it. Anybody else have anything in the community calendar? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr, second, second Councilor David Cormier. All those in favor of adjourning, please recognize the usual manner. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your week. The Lemonster City Council meeting is funded in part by DeCarolis Insurance Agency at www.decarolisinsuranceagency.com.